Hello lambs, hello children, hey kids, welcome back to the Hey Lamb podcast. It's Treacle and I am still here with Taz because this is part two of something that we started together. We didn't realise it was going to take quite so long. Long Taz, apologies, it's taken longer than I asked you for. Um, we're still here. We're still talking about glitter. Welcome back. <laughs> you're there with your um glass of cider. You're still you're still there with cider. I'm still here with vodka. Now, for people listening and for people uh, people watching on YouTube, it's part two. So, welcome back, everybody. Taz and I are continuing our sit down discussion of the glitter soundtrack. So. A little bit of housekeeping, let's just remind the people, Taz, where they can find you online. Tell everyone where they can find you. So on Twitter, I'm t- t- at Taz Irish Lamb, and on Instagram, it's Taz Conway. That's a, I just tested you there. But on the video version, it's up on the screen, but I did just uh, thought I'd just test you out there. So yeah, please do go and follow Taz on Instagram at Taz Conway, on Twitter as Taz Irish Lamb. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Treacle Tarts and get involved with the podcast over on Instagram. It is Hey Lamb Podcast. In part one, we caught up, because it's been a minute, and we were talking about the Glitter movie soundtrack album and like how do we how do we feel about it what do we call it guys let us know do you consider it a mariah carey album or just a soundtrack or both let us know we went into a track by track so part one we covered lover boy remix lead the way if we didn't mean to turn you on we're going to pretty much just jump back in where we left off so don't stop funkin for jamaica using that classic classic funkin for jamaica part that well, it's like its own, it's a sample, but again, I didn't really appreciate how much it was heavily using it until you go back and listen to that original track, because I didn't know it until I had to go and look it up. Did you know it before Glitter, or did you look it up because of Glitter? I looked at personally because of Glitter as well. I didn't know the original, no, but I don't personally like 80s music per se, so maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah. No, I um had to look it up and I was like, whoa, oh okay, this is this is maybe more than just like a sample, a sampleation moment. It's really, really using it. But I freaking love what she did with Don't Stop. I think it's fun because she gets the whole like the back and forth with Mystical. So she gets to the whole breathy girly part and Mystical does his gravelly like sexy kind of thing the back and forth is fun and then she just has that bit that bit which again isn't just mariah just randomly singing whatever that is her using the original song but i mean she takes it in like a whole different like space but you listen to don't stop and you're waiting 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 for that part and because you know it in the movie as well you've got that visual representation of her with that outfit grabbing the mic from Dice and just really, really like going for it. I really do enjoy Don't Stop. I think it's funky, it's cool, it's fresh. And then she gives us that incredible, incredible bit with the whistle note as well. I love Don't Stop and I kind of forgot about how much I loved it until I was listening to it again for this podcast. What do you think about Don't Stop? I love it. It's one of my faves actually off the album. And um, again, I love just the whole vibe of it. And even the video, it's fun. You know, where she has the yeah. three Mariahs and it's two of them are wowed by the the high note. If you haven't seen the video, it's really worth checking it out as well. Um, that's actually the other point. She doesn't have the glitter videos on her channel, does she? Yeah, what's going on with the glitter videos? So. Yeah, we didn't get, we're going to talk about MC30 and stuff later, but, you know, a few gaps in what we have been given for glitter. And yeah, you can't go and look up a HD version of these videos. Loverboy and Loverboy remix videos, we need to access them. Never Too Far is just a scene from the movie. So yeah, cute, but whatever. But Don't Stop was fun. And I love the whole, like you said, that the the three of them, like the girl group vibe. And she's kind of taking the piss out of herself a little bit because, you know, the middle one goes for the high note and the other two look at her like, what the heck are you doing? That's just not necessary. <laughs> So, again, we've always been saying Mariah is in on the joke. She's no fool. She's no idiot. She's in on the joke. She is sending herself up. She's choosing to poke a little bit of lighthearted fun at herself. She's like, yeah, I took it up there. Yeah, I busted out the whistle notes. And it's not for everyone. But you know what? I can, so I'm gonna. Like, why not? So, I love the video. 
Um, specifically for the trio, the three of them like together around the microphone is cute. And then that high note bit is fun. The rest of it, um, what else? She's on the piano. Oh yeah, with like um, some side boob action, right? She's on the piano with some side boob in that. Is it red dress? And she's um, all legs and side boob and pulls her hair up and is like just fun and flirty on, on the piano. So that's cute. But it's all about the, the trio, the, the trios of, uh, of Mariah. Because she stacks and stacks and stacks her vocals anyway. So why not give us some kind of visual representation of that? I love the layering of the tune as well. So even though it's kind of like, it probably throws you back to the Funkin' for Jamaica vibe. Her, like, way of layering her own lyrics when she's doing her part. Like, you're listening to one stream of a vocal and then there's another one on top and then another one. You can listen to that song maybe three different ways if you actually tune into the different... Yes. ...things that she's saying, which I love about it. You can literally be going with the lower vocals, going with the higher vocals, going with the, just keeping the background vocals. It's, mm. it's a really clever song. Um, a pity it didn't get a shine that it should have, but, you know, that's life, I guess. Yeah, that's a really good point you made because it's it's a really good example of some of her songs where you can, like, say, tune in to, like, one layer, one level, and then go in and just kind of try and follow that harmony or follow that, you know, that part. Don't Stop is a good example of that. Over here in the UK, we got Don't Stop with Never Too Far, right? That was the double A side. So we had Don't Stop slash Never Too Far, and I think maybe one of the CD singles, one of the CDs had the videos for them. But yeah, there was, like it got shine because, you know, it has a music video. And I feel like when I was watching MTV or MTV Bass maybe, or The Box, and what was another one? Kiss or something? All these music video channels. Don't Stop would come on. Love a boy a little bit, but Don't Stop had a bit of a moment over here on British TV. Like I could catch it on TV a few times and I was surprised. That, like I'd never seen Never Too Far. You just don't really see that. Love a boy, I could say a little bit, but Don't Stop would get some, the video would get some play. So it had a little bit of shine, but I mean, none of these songs have got like full on, apart from Love a Boy, sorry, sorry. I've got like full on like remixes. Like Love a Boy got the whole, you know, um, like the garage but vibe and everything. It's like, it's just so like different from Mariah, but I love it. And she re, re, um, re sang the vocals because we've got, is it the dreamy club of love and stuff? Like, really, really. Um, sexy remixes. I actually quite like them. It's like late night, you know, at a club. <laughs> you go home with somebody, you have some splashes, and it's that. It's really like late night sexy with like a with like a stranger kind of vibe. That's what I get. I'm, now I'm thinking, what was I doing? Who was I doing at the time? But that, that's what it reminds. That's the vibe I get. <laughs> late night shenanigans with someone you don't know their last name, maybe not their first name. Um, but apart from Loverboy, we didn't get a whole catalogue of remixes that we're kind of used to from Mariah. And Don't Stop is one where I feel like the potential was not <laughs> quite fulfilled. The music video was great. I don't know if it was remixes. Maybe I just wanted the single to have like a live performance or a bit more, you know, radio play or something. It just felt like I was into it and I wish the rest of the world was as well. Maybe with the glitter resurgence, they might all get a moment. So you never know. We never know. It might hit iTunes. It might go off on a tangent. We'll see. Hopefully. <laughs> that would be fun. I would love for Don't Stop to get a bit more shine. Okay. On to the next track, All My Life, which she did not write. Somebody wrote it and like presented it to her or did they write it for her? Crap, where's my little fact sheet? I haven't come I haven't come to the pod with um, facts on all my life. Taz, I'm going to do a bit of Google schmoogle while you tell us all about your thoughts on all my life. Yeah, what I love about all my life is, I don't think it was a cover, but as you said, she didn't write it, but it's very 80s. It's like something that could, it like sounds like an 80s cover. You know, and again, a fun, upbeat song. You, anytime you're in the car, you're driving along, all my life comes up, you literally turn Billy all the way up and let her do her thing. You know, it's a real fun 80s energetic song to me. Well, I'm turning to fantastic website, Resource to the Lamely, MariahRecords.com. So MariahRecords.com, it's got a couple of little quotes and they're telling us, there's a quote here. Can you think of a time where the music was funkier and the clothes were worse? I had Rick James write one of the songs for the movie 
and it sounds just like one of his hits from that time. Okay, apparently that's from Movie Line August 2001. And the cover article was, but can she carry a movie? So that quote rings a bell. And there's something else. I just said I wanted to do something in the vein of All Night Long. Ah, oh, I love All Night Long. Or like a Mary Jane Girls type record. And so he was like, cool. And he, Rick James, said, I have like a slightly different idea. So he gave me this track that sounds like it really is from 82. And it may be, for all I know, it was just a great experience. And that's Mariah being interviewed in 2001. So yeah, Rick James. So don't know much about Rick James. There's a gap in my brain. Please fill it, anyone that can um, educate me on Rick James. But um, yeah, so she, it sounds like she kind of reached out to him and said, I want something 80s and... What can you serve? <laughs> I'm surprised that she didn't try to meet up with him to, to, to collaborate on a track. Do you know, it's very not in the vein of what she does. Yeah, absolutely. But... How many times does she just take a song from someone or say, can you write something for this? And that is why there's that part of me that does treat Glitter as a soundtrack. Because if it's a Mariah Carey album, she wouldn't do that. She wouldn't say to someone oh, I want this type of song, can you write it for me? Or I'm looking for this type of song, do you have one? I think because part, you know, it, part of her is treating it as it's not a Mariah album. It is, it is a soundtrack. It has to serve the movie. The movie needs something like this or the soundtrack needs something like this. So yeah, yeah, it is outside of, like say, the wheelhouse of how she normally goes about it yeah, because Mariah doesn't take songs from people. But I'm glad she did on this occasion because I really, really love All My Life. And I guess, I suppose, because it's not even it's not even her character song. It's not even like it's Billy's song. It's like, oh, I need an 80s song that this person's going to sing, but I'm actually the lead singer, but I'm not really, and blah, blah, blah. It, it has to move the plot forward a bit as well. It can kind of be any kind of 80s song. And maybe she wasn't expecting it to be like as good as it was type thing. Like it just needed to be, oh, I need an 80s song that lead character sings and that technically is me singing it, but we find that out, blah, blah, blah. But actually all my life is, is quite slick and sexy. It's probably a blessing maybe that she didn't as well because she might have tried to bring a 90s or a noughties vibe in there un unconsciously. So it's for it to be a true 80s moment. She just let Rick James do his thing. He obviously had big hits or was writing big hits in the early 80s. So it just made sense that he could present a track to her that wasn't a cover. It was a, a new Mariah Carey song. So look, hey, I'm here for it. As she said, she doesn't know it may have been made. It might have been something he kept in his back pocket since the early 80s that never got. You know, she doesn't know that. But that's what was presented and obviously fit for her and the movie. So look, I'm here for it. It's a brilliant song. So yeah. yay for Rick James. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Flowers and applause and standing O to Rick James because I, I really do enjoy All My Life so, so much. I love the fact it's almost got, like, it's in parts. It's like, it doesn't even, she doesn't really get going with the, the vocals for the, um, the first verse until I think about 50 seconds in. Like, there's almost a whole minute of just, like, build up and, like, ah, uh, ah, uh, and just, like, you know, breathing and ooing and ahhing or whatever. And and it takes a while to even get going. And then at the end, there's almost like a reprise. You know, there's the whole like thing of, that's just sent you for some reason. <laughs> what, what, what's, 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 what's so entertaining with my uh, <laughs> semi-heavy breathing task? <laughs> I'm sorry if that was distracting for you, but she does do an she, Oh, please behave yourself. Take a sip. <laughs> Stay on topic, darling. Stay on topic. Um, <laughs> we love all my life. For the oohs and the ahs and the life that we get. Okay. Then we have something that is very different. Again, very different for Mariah. Reflections care enough. Now, just the title. Um, I think I've had this conversation with Nath. And maybe we had it in a group chat. Because I think some, we, I think Nath posed the question. Shout out to Friends of the Pod and the YouTube channel, Nath. I am Nath Moore. Um... I think Nathan was asking why do some songs have these like brackets, these parentheses, like why why is it reflections care enough? 
you know, and stuff. And I think, was it a group chat? Do you remember this? We were talking about um, if it's like, if there's another song that's already got the same title, it's just to give it its own, like, identification. It's what she refers to the song, I think, herself is in the bracket. So that's what she intended. Like, so we had mentioned, I think, at the time, for example, she referred to Can't Take That Away as Mariah's team. And so for this song, obviously, she was writing as as Care Enough, but everyone's like, I love your reflection song. And she's like, what song is it called? Oh, uh, yeah. So, so everyone kept that. referring yeah. reflections, reflections, reflections. Um, but in her, when she was penning the song, obviously her title was Care Enough. Do you really care or care enough for me? So what everyone was referring to as reflections. So that probably made sense her to have reflections then as the title and then in Care Enough in the brackets. Now you say that, that has come rushing back to me. It's absolutely, yeah, she found it interesting that she referred to the song by one title and other people were calling it by a completely different name. So she kind of put the two together. Reflections, Care Enough, is a song that is very much from the perspective of the character, Billy. It's not Mariah singing. She's not, it's not Mariah singing to Patricia. It is Billy in her situation of, you know, being that kid that was taken away from her mother, and has got all these unfulfilled wishes to get answers, be reunited and stuff and feeling very vulnerable. Um, and yeah, the lyrics, they're not, they're not Mariah. It's not Mariah singing like looking in or petals, you know, or something or outside. It, it's very much like a concept song, but it's so brilliantly written. And do you remember that, um, that TV special, A Home for the Holidays, that she did. And she her voice was so, like, breathy and wonderful. And she did Never Too Far Hero and Reflections and something else. Oh, I think I'll be there. And it was all about... Do you remember that one? It was all about um, adoption Nothing and fostering. And, and Yeah, and she changed... Um, there's so much to say about the song. But she changed one of the lines. Do you remember? Because in on the album version, it's um, if I'm somehow not quite good enough or deserving of a mother's love, you could have um, had the decency to give me up before you gave me life. And I'm like, shit, she's singing about abortion. Like, what? Like, that is like, Mariah, what? But then in front of all these kids that were, <laughs> that, you know, were born and went to foster and um, adoptive parents, she sang, could have had the decency to give me up the day you gave me life. Like, if you can't have me, if you can't step up and, you know, whatever, if you feel like I'm not deserving, then step down in a way. If you can't step up, then just give me up, like pass me on. Um, and yeah, I remember that. I remember that very, very distinctly because she kind of, she had to change that, <laughs> that, those couple, you know, those couple of words, you know, before you gave me life, the day you gave me life. It's very, very uh, different. Talk to me about, about your memories of this song and, um, and, this, and that special. So I do remember that special specifically, and we may have talked about this before, I'm not 100%, but it definitely came up somewhere. And, you know, now that you say that it was an adoption special or a fostering special, did she change it for that special or is it a lyric she regrets? Because, you know, mm. Mariah's kind of very, you know, all about the Bible. And not that she's a Bible basher or anything like that, but she'd be quite close with God and her. And that, I suppose, something like that would not be in theme with, I guess, church or religion or whatever. So is that a, was that for change for that particular show? Or is that a regret lyric? Or, or is both. that something that she wrote as Billy the character? Or, yeah. So I don't it's know. It's an interesting lyric. one. It's a very bold, it is a bold lyric. lyric to put in, even for, for a, a concept song. And uh, we've spoken about this before, so, you know, and I, I'm not shy about it. I don't mind, you know, sharing it um, here on the pod. I'm adopted. I was adopted as a baby. I've always grown up knowing that. I've had a um, wonderful upbringing, uh, wonderful parents, but I've always known that I was adopted. So when this song was there, I was like, whoa, like, this is a song where... Um, with like my my Mariah friends, my Lamb friends, I connect to this song in like a different, in like a different way. It was like very, very personal. And I didn't, you know, and I, it was almost a bit like not uncomfortable to listen to, but it's like so, like Mariah's written this song as like a concept song or like a character song, but it really does connect with people that 
have been adopted or have been fostered. And it was so strange for me because I was already, she already had me. She already had me, you know, in her back pocket, round her finger, you know, take all my coins. You've already got me. And then she puts out reflections, which I can connect to as a child who was adopted. And I was like, it just, it kind of blew my mind. And it was maybe a little bit, I don't know how to explain it, maybe a little bit uncomfortable to listen to because it was so close to the bone. Um, and I didn't feel any type of way about the whole give me up. Um, you could have had the decency to give me up before you gave me life. Like that's pain, that's very painful, but I didn't take any offense at that. You know, cause it's almost like, it is, cause you throw that kind of language around. Any pair, any child in, you know, can say it's their parent in the heat of anger. You know, um, well, if you didn't, you know, if you can't look after me, you shouldn't have had me. Or, you know, if you can't afford three kids, you should have just had two or you know, whatever. You like, we all say things, we all like throw things out there. I didn't take any offense to that. I didn't look at it as like Mariah saying that, you know, parents should have done this or this is like an option or like whatever at all. I think it's just like, that's the character expressing how she feels like, you know, why, why did you have me if you weren't, weren't going to look after me? Why do this if you can't follow through? You know, I kind of like took it that way. Um, but I did have a lot of respect for her putting herself in the position, in that position and articulating it so well because it it, it does, feel, it still really, really does touch me. It's such a beautiful song and it's a beautiful lyric. Um, and I do still really, really connect with that. But I think just, you know, bravo for her and her songwriting. It's so amazing that she could put herself in that position. And I had a lot of respect for her for doing the special A Home For The Holidays and bringing that song forward and changing that lyric and just recognizing that, like you say, maybe it was a, like a regret maybe, or she just wanted to change it anyway, or whether it was just, oh, I'm okay with the lyric, but I just need to change it. You know, I don't want to intimate, in, intimate about adopt, um, uh, abortion in front of adopted, you know, kids. So yeah, little, little like ramble, uh, <laughs> tangent there. Um, but yeah, well, I connect with the song well, and I love it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful song. It actually has a centerpiece in the movie as well when she's writing it. And, That's right. And obviously when Mariah, it, around press afterwards, kind of a lot of asked her, was it kind of the movie semi-autobiographical? Um, which the she obviously denied. They were trying to make comparison. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <A bit nervous. laughs> but like, um, denying that it was, but you'd wonder, because she is a co-writer on the song, was there a part for that question? That like, because, like, obviously, I've put, now we have the luxury of having read her her own biography. That like her relationship with her mother at times, she questioned her stance in the family. She looked like even her brothers and her father or her mother or anybody. She obviously felt almost isolated in her own core family. So you'd wonder, did she reach in to some inner feelings for this song as well? You'd have to wonder: is there some parallel or comparison, even if it's slight, in there? Mm, yeah, yeah, you're so right. Taz, you're at the end of your um, little glass there. You need some more cider. Um, I've still got half a drink, but we'll give you a splash break. So we're gonna top up Taz's cider and we still have a few more songs from Glitter to chat through right after this. Thanks for listening to Hey Lamb, guys. I hope you are enjoying it. If you are, you can leave me a little tip. You can buy me a drink over on buymeacoffee.com. It is a great way to show your support to your favorite creators by buying them a drink. Simply head over to buymeacoffee.com slash heylam and you can tip me with a little drink. Cheers. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is fun to record. Um at length, <laughs> like you just said, um, it is the perfect day to record a podcast because the weather is grim and miserable. Um, I've had the pleasure of your company and a few splashes while we are recording. And you know what? Yeah, <laughs> there you are with the with the cider. Cheers. Here I am with my, with my vodka. Oh, my coaster stuck to my glass. There we are. Um, so cheers, cheers. Thanks a lot for joining me. Always appreciate your company, Taz. Hmm. And vice versa, thinking, darling. Oh, wow. What I'm thinking is, it's actually quite nice to just, like spread it out because I'm always like, there's a topic and there's an hour and I'm not clock watching. And this feels more like when we Zoom 
with the boys, you know? It feels just a little bit more chilled just because there's no pace. And I'm like, do you know what? I was thinking about this in our little splash break. I'm thinking I kind of maybe want to do like a boozy one sometime. Not like overly boozy, but I'm just saying like a late, like, hey lamb, late night edition. You know, like, there's actually splashes, and we don't even have any topic. Because I kind of, like, book a guest or arrange a guest, and there's a topic. We swap some, you know, like, uh, notes on, here's what we're going to talk about. Here's roughly how I think it will flow. Here's how much time we've got per section and stuff. But I'm thinking, it might be fun one time just to get a little group of us and just pour a splash and kiki, hit record, and if it turns out good, I'll use it. If it doesn't turn out good, I won't. Because, yeah, I yeah, hey, Lamb, late night edition. What do you think? I just had a concept as you were talking about that. And I was like, why don't we watch movie glitter together? Like, one screen is the movie. And us just laughing, kicking, love oh this gosh. part, hate this part, love that outfit, hate this outfit, that was so funny, or, you know, whatever. We just kind of, we're kind of like the over... Yeah, like, we're all just watching at the exact same time, and there's one screen where we're all like, literally zooming in or whatever. You know, and we are we all have it on our TV. We all just play at the same time and watch it exactly the same time, and I'll just give our two cents and be kicking oh, okay. and laughing, and it's not that serious. <laughs> that would be fun. I don't know. I'm trying to think how we would um, organize that so that because okay, if it's like a podcast or a YouTube video, then I can't have the audio in you know, because they get flagged for copyright and, and stuff. That won't be cool. But maybe if there's, like, a way of doing it, you know, I don't know, maybe just with, like, channel members and friends of the pod. So it's, like, a private, like, a Zoom thing or something. I, I do want to set up some, like, members-only, like, events. Because, like I say, you're, you know, you're a popular returning guest, and I've got friends of the pod, and I've got channel members, and all of you guys are on my Instagram close friends list. Where I post more often and I just, you know, talk about what's coming up on the YouTube channel and the podcast and stuff. Um, so maybe it's like that kind of a group where there's just like a, a, a number of people where it's manageable and we do like a private viewing. I don't have to worry about like copyright and stuff. Like we can just play it together and just watch it and stuff. I have to think about that. I want, I want to do something like that because Mariah's not doing a movie theater tour. Of glitter <laughs> so i want to do like a like a viewing party or something you know like if it was on um um netflix you can do viewing parties like you can watch together with a friend can't you, you can get some friends together and you like if one person I, i've not done this so have you if one person presses pause it pauses for everyone or something so you stay in sync but you're not on camera together you have the chat room like that would be fun that would be fun to arrange something like that. Or even just like a follow along where we say we're going to watch the movie at a certain time on a certain date like Mariah did for her Apple Christmas special. And it's like at this time we're pressing play and there's no pausing, but you just like tweet each other and like go through, you know, that might be something. So maybe there's like a public version, which would be like a hashtag thing on Twitter. But then maybe privately there can be like a Zoom thing for channel members friends of the pod and yeah oh yeah yeah we need to okay you're really good at doing this you get like you give me new ideas and put like extra things on my to-do list <laughs> which i i love um but please taz do i love good ideas but i don't have to do anything yeah yeah you dump the ideas and leave me with all the follow-up so but i'm loving this as a concept love the concept so please do keep prodding me um about that idea right do you know what we're not doing a part three we need to get through the rest of the songs in this part two of the podcast so let's continue we've covered reflections we get now to another cover last night a dj saved my life featuring buster rhymes dj clue and fabulous what do you think of this cover version yeah i'm here for it i love it it's a real up-tempo feel good disco classic mariah does it just this you can tell Mariah loved the original and she's living her life to this song. Like, just having to be able to, you know, it's just, I think she's loving that she's covering this, you know? And she got yeah. Buster, obviously, Fabulous on there and DJ Crew. I think it's just a real good, uh, feel good track for her. And it's for everyone listening as well. You could just hear that she's loving it, that it's almost infectious to the listener as well. 
yeah, it's like party vibe and she's there with her friends. I think there was some criticism of the album at the time that there were too many covers because, I mean, here you've got Buster Rhymes, DJ Clue, Fabulous. Um, we've got Eric Benet coming up. We've had Mystical. We've had um, um, Nate Dogg and Ja Rule on If We Love a Boy Remix, Debrat, Ludacris, uh, 22 and Shauna. There's like, there, there's quite a few people on this, but I like it. It works. And I think Loverboy remix and last night I DJ saved my life are really good examples where it's just like partying with your friends. Mariah's there hanging out, having fun with her friends on a track. And that's why I love it. And it is fun. It is festive, but it's, again, it's got that kind of like late night kind of vibe. It's not like it's not like an in-your-face bop. It's a bit more of like a party, like a chilled party kind of vibe. It's, for me, it's more It's more late night. I'm, I'm, I, again, it, it's like late night shenanigans with with a, a gentleman you may or may not know by name. It's, it's kind of got those vibes for me again. What was I doing to this Glitter soundtrack back in 2001? I'm trying to rack my brain. Can't remember his name. There must be someone. Let, let's just say it. <laughs> let's just say it's an in-deep cover, so. <laughs> in-deep. <laughs> Too deep. Um, <laughs> I am always here it for was last also... night, DJ Saved My Life. It was uh, an vi um, a, a interesting video moment. Do you remember? We didn't know about it for a while, but there was that kind of shot on a Nokia, whatever, you know, low res in the back of a limo, you know, music video. She's rolling around <laughs> in the back of a limo in a bikini or whatever. Um, fun, camp. I would love for us to have an official, you know, I say high res. I don't know if it can exist in high res because it's like it's shot on someone's, you know, mobile phone from two thousand one. But that and the the the, the live um, um, performance at VH One something where she's in like the the bra with the the blazer over the top and they had the pink balloon drop and everything. That was VH One Vogue Fashion Awards or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I was going to mention about the video as well. I do remember she released it exclusively on MariahCarrier.com or it might have been mcarrier.com back then. Oh, really? um, So you could actually you could actually stream it, but it, I, back then it was like a WAV file or it wasn't even like a thing. I don't even think like MP4 existed. So it would take a lot of work probably to bring that to a high res now. It would probably take a lot of um, getting the original files and trying to like artificially intelligence kind of frame by frame. <laughs> artificial because... intelligence. <laughs> Whatever they call it, I'd go CGI, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, it's out there, it's cute. There I don't even care if it's not high res. CGI, artificial intelligence, whatever. I'll take it low res without artificial intelligence. Let's just have it. Please, Mariah. Let's have all of these music videos on the YouTube channel, but we need Last Night at DJ Save My Life. It's a little bit on the longer side, isn't it? But again, that's why for me, it's like a late night thing. Do you know what? The next time I have the, the kids over, the next time I have the boys over, I think I might slip some of these songs in, you know? I think I might slip this onto the playlist because it's that, you know, after a few drinks where you, I, I don't, I just want a certain like mood and you want some bops, you want some jams. And I feel like everyone knows this song. Doesn't matter what age you are, everyone knows a version, an iteration of last night, a DJ saved my life. So I might slip that on the playlist and see how it goes down because one thing I have realized, and I've been listening to the soundtrack slash album, the, um, you know, this past couple of days, is that I don't have enough of these songs on playlists. I kind of leave it as its own like island and I'd need to put them, put the songs like on things. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually really feeling this late night kind of vibe. I know exactly which, which playlist I'd, I'd put it on. So, Guys, get involved. YouTube comments, Instagram comments. Let us know what do you think of last night DJ Save My Life and that live performance. Oh my God, the, the glitter motorcycle. That's the best part. Well, one of them is the entrance. In fact, uh, I've reacted to this on my YouTube channel because it's like, it. yeah, because I think I remember saying it's not like the most exciting song. Like it's a bit more chilled, like I've been saying, but she opens... Like the, the doors open and she's on the glitter, mo like the, the motorcycle encrusted in, you know, studs, whatever. Like it's all sparkly. The outfit, she saunters out. There's the other stage, the B stage. Then there's the balloon drop. It's actually, there's a bit of production in, in everything. It's not her to perform the song. So when I think of last night, I think 
of that live performance. I think of the music video and it just gives me a total vibe and it kind of had to grow on me over time, but I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Okay. Next up, we have Want You featuring Eric Benet. I have my thoughts, feelings, recollections, and emotions, but I'll let you go first. You're the guest. I don't want to influence you with my opinion. What, what's your opinion on Want You? So Want You, again, is very left field of a Mariah song, <clears throat> so I like it for that. But I go through moments of loving it, and then there's times I can be like, I can live without it. But I do think it's a great song. Um... And I think it starts off kind of slow, but when you get into it, you're in it, you know? So I think it gets overlooked a lot, even by myself, probably unfairly. So I think it's a great track. That was like a Miss USA pageant kind of answer. You were trying to... <laughs> you were, I felt like no, you were trying to it. not throw road. shade. You were trying to not throw shade. Okay, okay. you said you overlook it maybe sometimes. I, I am guilty of that. Um, some lyrics came up in a quiz on Lamb versus Lamb. And I got, it's the only time I ever get a song title wrong. I put down The Way. I'd had a few splashes. I didn't even put Want You. I put The Way. Because she sings, it's just The Way. It's just yeah. The Way I Want You. And it's it's not, it's just not my vibe. I really do appreciate the elements of the song. And I love hearing her with Eric. But I never reach for it. And it was one, and, uh, it was one of my least favourites. And like now, here in you know, 2021, 20 years on, it probably is my least favourite. It's just not my vibe. And I, I, I don't know why. I just, I, I understand it's a good song. There are other songs that I like of hers that I like less. So I don't hate Want You. I, I, it's, I just, it's almost like it's such a, uh, like a specific mood. Or it's something about the rhythm and the melody. And I just... I don't want to be rude about it. I just, I just don't occur with this song. It's very kind of whisper tone as well. So it's not like a full voice song. It's like them vibing up. It's kind of sexy. I don't know. I don't hate it, but I do skip it sometimes. But when I get into it, I love it. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Let's, let's leave it there. <laughs> let's see what everyone else thinks in the comments. Never too far. Okay, so this for me is a song that doesn't even have to live on Glitter. It could just be a Mariah song. So when we think of Glitter being a soundtrack versus a Mariah album, this is a song that almost could kind of just be a Mariah song. It It is that, it's trying to be that, um, that kind of anthem, like A Star Is Born. There's Lady Gaga singing I'll Never Love Again, which I love so, 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 so much. And Never Too Far, that's like, you know, Glitter's version of that song. I do like it. I love how um, tender and soft the opening is, where it's, you know, basically a cappella. I love the ending. And I do like how the song builds. I like the fact that just little things satisfy me, how she sings uh, the word glittering, you know, and stuff in there. But I always found the chorus a little bit, and everyone says the same word, shouty. It's just the, it's just the phrasing of never too far away, and, you know, the, the note that she's at, the key that she's in, the phrasing, it is a little... But, but that kind of makes sense because it's like a crying out. It's like you're never too far away and she's crying out. And she, but for me, it's just that little, little too close to shout, shouting. It's a little bit shouty. And I don't want to get any hate for it, um, but never too far. I mean, when you've got never too far and lead the way on the same album, please. I mean, lead the way exactly. is going to win every day, every day. I feel like they're like sisters, though. I feel like they're in the well, same. Well, she's thing. the ugly sister. Both. Lead the way is the blonde, pretty one, and then Never Too Far is the slightly older. Maybe she's brunette. We don't know. Maybe she's carrying a few extra pounds, but she's not the pretty sister. So you're saying it's Allison? Okay. Well, no, I went there. <laughs> edit that out. Edit that out. Um. So Never Too Far, I like it. I do like it. I like the video. I like the moment where the lights come down i think visually with the video i like it more than it's than the song itself i think i'm not having that taz i'm gonna just i'm gonna have to disagree with you i don't like watching it with the video because then i just get reminded of the fact that we were meant to have a video and she was not physically in any capacity to film one and absolutely but then 
I, I don't want to watch a scene from the movie. So I get that they wanted to release it and then, you know, so I know why they did it, but I definitely prefer just listening to the song, like away from the movie, okay. it, which is, which is weird. I just prefer it because it's, it's weird things. Like when you watch her perform and we'll talk about this, I'll talk about this when I talk about the movie in another episode of the pod, but like, I remember her saying when she was performing as Billy, she had to kind of check all of her mannerisms. Like using her hand and you know, all the handography because that's Mariah, not Billy. And there are a couple of moments in that Never Too Far scene where you like see her hand like go up, like she wants to do something with her hand and she has to kind of stop herself. And I feel like I'm watching Mariah acting or trying to act. I'm going to go there. I'm going to say it. Like it's it's not Mariah performing is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm stuck between it's Mariah looking beautiful. But I can't look at it and go, oh, that's Billy. That's Billy's song. I'm like, no, it's Mariah singing a Mariah song, but she's trying not to look like Mariah as she's doing it. So my brain gets a bit confuddled. I get a bit muddled, a bit confused, a bit confuddled. Um, so I get distracted by the visual. So for me, Never Too Far is better off in my ears. And I don't enjoy watching it as much. I don't know if that's controversial, but I'm going to leave it in the episode. <laughs> Well, look, I love Never Too Far. I, I, I guess what you're saying as well, you're trying to look at it as Billy, but it's quintessentially Mariah you're looking at. I mean, it's yeah. Mariah, down to the Gutna, the whole of the dress, the lot. You know, so she is, um, I guess, for me, I watch it as it's Mariah doing a Mariah performance, I guess. I wouldn't knock it. If, like, if I was showing a vocal showcase someone, I'd happily show on Never Too Far and be like, listen to this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so it goes there for me. I am still proud of it, and I very much enjoyed the medley with Hero. And we got those live versions, and we just spoke about A Home for the Holidays, and we get the whistle at the end, and she sings Never Too Far up in Whistle, because she gets, obviously, credit for singing in Whistle Register, but the fact that she can enunciate and she can pronounce words up in there as well, and I love that little clip, because you can clearly hear her, you know, form the words never too far and I think those words maybe are like easier to form other words would be um difficult you think of like uh, yeah anyway but never too far I, I love it um it's just always going to come second well I you know there's three ballads for me because we've got reflections as well but reflections is more like a character piece and like then for me it strikes really really personally so in terms of like oh a mariah ballad that i don't have any personal connection with and it's like it's a Mar it's a mariah song not a character song it's never too far versus lead the way and lead the way always wins always 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 um but then we do have one more song which is kind of a ballad but it, it's more um you know uh close my eyes petals it's that kind of vibe twister Twister is the nickname of her stylist, right? I forget her. Was it Blair? Was it Blair? Was it her surname, Blister? And no. she sadly passed away. No. It was Tanya Twist. It was a Tanya. stylist by the name of Tanya Twist. Where am I going with Blair? Tanya, Tanya Twist. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So she she committed suicide, right? It was really sad. Yes. So that's the whole premise of this next song then obviously yeah. so i think it's like an ode maybe for her family as well maybe get some type of solace out of there um i guess it's obviously a very personal song i'd say she probably hovered over whether to release that song or not because you know mariah sometimes with her personal moments she sometimes keeps a lot of things for herself yeah but um it... i'd say she put it out there in hopes that someone that knew tanya might get something some type of I can't even think of the word. Just some type comfort, of comfort, some type, some type of solace, some exactly. type of comfort. Some type of comfort. It's exactly. coming from, it's a very smart song because you can tell from the meaning, it's very, very personal. It's coming from a personal place, but it's like so many of her songs written in a way where you can apply it to your own situation. And it's there in, in the lyrics. Now, do you remember that in the movie, the last line, has got different lyrics to the album version. Come on, you're a fellow legacy lamb, out. fellow legacy lamb. If I know this and you don't, I'm going to enjoy lording this up over you. Tell me you. what it... 
<laughs> okay, tell me what's on the album. I'll see if I can remember what's in the movie or vice that, versa. The album version finishes with, yeah, I'm feeling kind of fragile and I've got a lot to handle, but I guess this is my way of saying goodbye. The last line no, in the movie is different. The movie version, because I it like it grabbed me in the movie theater. Like, oh my god! Right. It, like, there's a there's a different version. It's only a couple of words, but the movie version goes, "Yeah, I'm feeling kind of fragile, and I've got a lot to handle, but I guess I've got to keep it all inside." She takes away. I guess this is my way of saying goodbye because it's as she well. is. It's that whole. Um, um, when does it come in the movie? She's 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 uh, reconciling with her mother, right? Yeah, they found her mother, and she's kind of walking up the garden path up to the house. Yeah, and they're, they're yeah. Connected with her. So it doesn't make any sense for her to sing. I guess this is my way of saying goodbye. That makes no sense. Yeah, I never so, do that. So that and, that and that, moves me. So and that is a line where it really is about Tanya and 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 her personal loss. So they she sang a different version, which is. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot to handle, but I guess this. But I guess I've got to keep it all inside, and that makes more sense in the movie. Like she's been on stage, tried to wrestle with her emotions of Dice passing away, um, and then she's got her personal life with her mother. So it's the whole behind the stardom. She's got all this going on, and I've got a lot to handle, but I've got to keep it. I guess I've got to keep it all inside because I'm this star, right? It's that kind of narrative, um, and it just makes a bit more a bit more sense. I mean, as far as I know, we like, we've never had like that version released. I mean, it's only like one little line change, but it it just changes kind of the meaning of much of the song. So there you go, there you go. I wonder how many of the kids listening uh, knew about that line change. If you Taz Legacy Lamb. Didn't know that. I didn't know, so I did not. Know <laughs> I'm that. sure you did. So I'm I sure am. you just forgot. Shut it, honey. I genuinely it's been never a minute. heard that. So. It's been a minute. Okay, right. We've gone through track by track. That took two episodes, but my gosh, that was fun. Let's talk a little bit, just briefly, about the lasting impact and legacy. Now, Mariah distanced herself from glitter. You said it. You know, she was referring to it as um dust <laughs> she couldn't even say the word and i was so so happy that we got the whole section about that period in her life in the memoir and it, i'm just so happy you know it got some justice you know 2018 justice for glitter caution world tour she was moved to actually perform some songs from it um that sweet sweet fantasy tour we got a little smack of lover boy so you know the she, you know, she was paving the way and everything. But to have an actual Justice for Glitter moment on the Caution World Tour was amazing. And I think, you know, from recording these two episodes with you, we've reminded each other and hopefully everyone else just how masterful she was with this. It was ahead of its time. It, there's some beautiful music, some clever music, some really genius songwriting. And I'm so happy for her that it finally gets recognition all these years later yeah like for me over the years before it had before the justice for glitter moments and everything i do remember like that glitter almost had a cult following among for the, all the wrong reasons like even the movie say because it's so bad it's good you know that almost was the vibe with it so the people that like in, who watched the, like, there's obviously cults out there that like try to find the worst movie and glitter was up there as a cult following you know for that wrong reason but it I'm glad now to see that Mariah has come full circle with it. She can look back now and be proud of the sales that it's achieved as an album and just be proud of the work overall. We all know Glitter, the movie, isn't what was originally penned on paper. It was obviously by Kate Lanier, I think, who done the Tina Turner movie, What's Up? It was supposed to be grittier, harder. Like It was very watered down so they could bring the age down to, I think, to 12, but it was probably originally an 18s movie. So a lot of things went wrong for Glitter, but obviously the corporate beans wanted to just hit the masses and it just wasn't ended up what Mariah initially signed on for so I think in the early stages about the movie when she was excited about the project it was going to be a left field project for Mariah it was going to be like whoa like this is like heavy but obviously I even think the original director jumped ship halfway through he's like this is not what I signed up to film either I think there was like a mess going on then we had the whole I don't know her debacle as well it was just the whole thing was enshrouded in a lot of controversy and yeah. a lot of disappointment from everyone involved so but look she can look back at it now and appreciate it. And as you said, we got the, the glitter moment on the caution tour. 
she loves it now. There's glitter for ju- justice for glitter. It went number one night just on the cusp of the release of caution. And now we have, as you see, the merch. She's owning it. She's giving us a love of IT. Everything that was always looked at as a bad moment in her career, she's now owned it and actually making money off it. Like So kudos to her. So much respect. So much respect. So there's some really good music there. And one thing I've got to mention, actually, just kind of flicking through back, uh, back through my notes here, is Lead the Way um, it was written with Walter. It's Walter... Afnasia Famaraya because they started working on that back in the butterfly era like she she really did put so much time into glitter and the music I think I think lead the way is like a 2000 vocal and and I listened to um out here on my own on the rarities last year I'm like oh I'm getting lead the way kind of vocal you know moment so th- that's such like a like a sweet spot for me like her, her vocal there, I love it. I love Lead the Way. I love Out Here on My Own. I love the fact that on Glitter, it's like our last Walter song, <laughs> really, um, at, that, at that point. Because uh, it's like a spillover from Butterfly. Butterfly, we you know, we widely recognize that and acknowledge that as like such a peak for her, such a high. Well, she was developing music for Glitter right there and then. Heartbreaker was you know, intended to be for Glitter. And that came straight after Butterfly. Lead the Way was in development. I think even there for me, the B-side to the Never Too Far Hero medley, that was kind of um, Butterfly territory. She was she started to write that. I remember she said in an interview at some point or a, a press article or something. So it's still Mariah. I think it's under this shadow of, oh, it was like a bad time for her, like press-wise and stuff. But the music is there. The music is there on the record. And... It's been fun to go back and, and revisit it. One thing I want to do is to spend an episode, or maybe that's another two-parter, let's see how it goes. But I, I do want to do at least one episode talking specifically about the movie. I want to have a few episodes here on the pod where we just really live in this moment. I don't want to rush it. I want to really enjoy it. Glitter, for me, was my initiation into the Lamley and it's the 20th anniversary maybe Mariah has a few um treats for us maybe by the time this goes out we're going to know about them and we'll have to update and go um do an Instagram live or, or a YouTube live or something Taz but I want to do some some content talking about the movie so today was all about the past two episodes were all about the music but I want to talk about the movie would you be down for coming back and and you know, watch the movie with me in advance and then we come back on the pod and, and, and chat about it. Well, absolutely. I haven't watched the movie in a minute, so it'll be nice to go back and, like, as you say, revisit it. I'll be listening for little things, like you say, the end of Twister now would be something I listen out for. Yeah. So i definitely down for that. I'd like to... And also, just actually as well, I remember reading some article in some, like, you might have to Google this afterwards, but apparently some, like, publication had said that she did do a track with Madonna for the Glitter album as well. I don't buy that. But I couldn't see it. I don't either, but there was someone that said it on paper on an interview, and apparently she was agreeing to it, or she made some quote. I can't remember, but I really don't see it myself. But obviously, <laughs> Madonna was the queen of the 80s till Mariah took her throne. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know if I buy that, but we'll look into that. And one thing I've noticed on the video podcast is we've been recording so long, my lighting situation has changed. I've, I'm very dim right now, so apologies to those who are watching the video podcast, but Taz and I have been at it today. We've gone in deep with Glitter, um, but it's been so much fun. And yeah, maybe I'll get you back on then to talk about the movie. Today was all about the music. And with that in mind, we are going to play Spin, Pin or Bin, the Glitter version. So thank you to everyone who's been so patient. Part one, we didn't play Spin, Pin or Bin. I wanted to wait until we got to the end of the Glitter soundtrack album. I still say soundtrack album. I don't know what I'm going to call it. But we now have discussed all the songs. We've reminded ourselves how we feel about them. So we're going to play Spin, Pin or Bin, the Glitter edition. And all of you are invited to join. So let me know your choices in the YouTube comments and over at Hayland Podcast on Instagram as well. Very quick reminder of the rules. There'll be three songs chosen from random. This edition is just glitter. One has to be spin, one has to be pin, and one has to be bin. So spin is love it, play it now. Pin is, nah, I don't know, meh, put pin in it for now, maybe another day. And bin is trash. You have to throw it away and you never get to play it ever again. 
Taz, are you ready? Good to go. Let's do it. First song is Don't Stop, Funkin' for Jamaica. Second song, Reflections, Care Enough. And the third one, Last Night a DJ Saved My Life. So Don't Stop, Reflections, and Last Night a DJ Saved My Life. You've got to spin one, pin one, and bin one. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd like a minute. I always let the what? guest go first anyway. <laughs> so I get to think while you go first. Oh, man, if... it's a deep end. <laughs> Unless you really don't want to go first, but it's your decision. You can go first if you want. Second, I'll just go first. Let me think now. So I think I would spin, would you believe, Don't Stop, Funky for Jamaica, because it's just okay. a fu- such a funky, fun record. I will pin... I will pin reflections and I'll bin for now. Last night I do just in my life. You know, I was <laughs> thinking. <laughs> no, I was thinking I might spin reflections because my thing is, oh no, keep, keep, like can't let it go. But pin is not letting it go. It's just saying I'm not going to play it right now. Reflections is not a song that I listen to all the time because I connect with it so personally. So actually, for me, pin is the right option for reflections. It's like. It's not, it cannot go in the bin. It can never be anywhere bin adjacent, but it's not for right now. It's very personal. I don't even want to listen to that with anyone. So I'm going to co-sign with you completely. I'm going to spin Don't Stop because we can enjoy that together. We can enjoy that as like, you know, a group, a party, whatever. Um, I cannot let reflections ever go away. So it has to be last night a DJ saved my life in the bin. And I don't feel too bad because... The one song she wrote is I'm Keeping. I'm just not playing it right now. And of the other two, you just pick a favorite and it has to be, it has to be Don't Stop. So they, those are our choices for Spin, Pin and Bin. Let us know what you guys think. Once again, guys, don't forget to go and show Taz some love over on Instagram at Taz Conway and on Twitter as well at Taz Irish Lamb. You can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at Treacle Tarts and also follow the show over on Instagram at Hate Lamb Podcast. If you're feeling generous and supportive and you want to treat me and Taz to a splash, we need a top up because we've actually got through quite a bit today. We need replenishing. So uh, buymeacoffee.com slash Hey Lamb and you can get us topped up for the next episode we're going to film together which I think I'm going to just get you back Taz I'm going to after this I'm going to get you in the diary and we are going to find a date where we can get back together and talk about the glitter movie that would be lots of fun but we have to then actually have some homework and actually go and watch it in advance (laughs) perfect I'm down for it anyway because that's well overdue at this stage And those of you who are members of my YouTube channel, go and check out the after show. Taz doesn't know this yet, but what we're going to do in the after show is we're going to rank our songs from Glitter. We're going to go, uh, we're going to rank them from favorite to least favorite. So (laughs) we're going to have another quick little break to go and uh, powder our noses, refresh our drinks, whatever we need to do. And then we're going to film the after show. We will be ranking our Glitter songs favorite to least favorite in the after show taz thank you so so much it's been loads of fun chatting with you about glitter and we're going to keep the conversation going cheers darling cheers honey cheers thanks a lot